Hey guys, Brad and the Buff. I got my buff in my head and I'm ready to go. I am digging out some of my hot tent camping trip stuff. I've got a weekend planned for next weekend and it's one of these things where you want to make sure your gear is nice and tight and together so that when you get out there you haven't found that you're missing something or that something is ripped. And so I like to get my gear out once. There's a good bit of snow on the ground so today is a perfect day to set up my equipment kind of see what it is. I have two different tents. I'm not sure which one I'm going to take on this trip, but I am going to get them out here and set them up in this video. Okay, I moved the camera a little bit because the sun was starting to move over into it. So it's a slightly different angle, but same concept. I've got my mega horn here. I'm going to set it up real quick. Um, this is my larger. This is 100% a two person. You can fit three people in it. Um, I've done both. It's very, very roomy for two people while you're using the hot tent. I also like this. I take in the summer, I'll use it for my whole family. I can easily fit four people inside of it. If you don't have your stove going, um, so it's a much bigger tent. It is a good bit heavier than my other one. It's about nine pounds. I've done a whole review on it, but the main thing is I'm just gonna set it up, check a few things. Now, when you're setting up these tents and you got snow, the first thing you're gonna do is you gotta pack snow down in the area that you're gonna be in just by going around like this. And I'm gonna make a whole area here flat and uh, I'll do a little time lapse, get this one set up and check it out with my uh, stove pipe and then I'm going to bring out the next one. Okay, so this is my large one. I got it set up. I got all my pipe pieces, everything's together. I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I didn't do all the guy lines. I would normally do that, especially um, if I'm gonna be staying out the night in it. Like I said, this is just a quick setup, just six stakes. Normally I have a ton in it. Uh, I know that one time I didn't put up the guidelines. It got super windy and I really wish I had because I was freaked out all night that the uh, the tent would collapse, so I make sure to guy line everything out, no matter if I just need it or not. But this is my larger tent. I've uh, just got a quick setup on it. Wanted to make sure I had all the pieces, which I did. So now I'm gonna get out my other one. I'll be back in just a minute. So my larger tent to the right is the Lux L-U-X-E Mega Horn. This is the Lux Mini Peak. So the Mini Peak too. So you would think that you'd always want a larger tent, just for the extra space but if you're just going out by yourself i found that what i really needed was something that was a lot lighter this pit this tent uh for me ends up being about three pounds with all the pieces and everything with the stakes uh, as opposed to nine pounds with the mega horn much quicker to set up um, takes a lot less uh, of a footprint space to set up as well that could be huge because you don't need to scurry around to find such a large area that's flat you only need you know something about just a little square area that you can set up maybe a six by well a little bit bigger maybe an eight by eight as opposed to needing a good 10 by 10 maybe 12 by 12 for the other one so there's many reasons you would want to but honestly the main reason is to heat this thing takes so much less wood that I don't have to worry about cutting up a ton of wood to have it prepared to set up for this tent. Um, I can keep the, because it's such a smaller square footage on the inside, you can get it warm a lot faster. You don't have to keep constantly feeding um, your uh, fireplace, um, your stove with wood. It helps you save on wood. It helps you not have to collect as much wood. So there are many reasons you'd want this. It's just a much easier setup. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick uh, time lapse on this setup so you can see what it looks like as well. And then we'll go through the tents. So I'll show you kind of what they're like. Okay guys, I am just going to walk you around these two different tents. I think I've had them set up before, but just kind of want to show you my two winter tents here that I use. So once again, this is my Lux Mini Peak 2, and this is my Lux Megahorn, and that's L-U-X-E. Um, they're both hot tents. They both have a spot for what they call a stove jack, which is actually just this little square on the outside here. And then you can put in, um, like, there's a piece that they come with that's just straight Velcro. I threw it on the inside there. That's a blank piece where if you're using it in the summer and you don't need to put in a stove jack, it just covers it, uh, like, in case it's raining, makes it waterproof. And then the piece that you put in, if you actually have a stove pipe through it, looks like this. It's this gray material. It's made specifically to handle high heat and temperature. It's got a flap on the back side so that it it, um, it covers over your stovepipe. So as it's snowing or if it rains, it'll just keep running down the sides. Um, so let me take you through my Lux Mini Peak. Now, I don't have these guys out guide out. Um, I don't have them buried in the snow. This is just a quick setup. So normally what you do is you pull all these taunt. And then like, see how there's this there's big area underneath here. What I would do, um, if you see, there's like about three inch gap there at the bottom. But I would take that, lower the tent down a little bit. So it's more flush. And then I would cover all of these edges. Let's see if I get it, all these edges over in snow to create a barrier so air can't run in underneath. Cause what happens is, is when you're burning stuff in that stove, it's drafting. So it's pulling air. And so any spot in here that you have that, that allows air, it's, pull, it's gonna pull air from underneath the tent, not the air that's in the tent that's already a little bit warm. And it'll actually keep, keep uh, give you a draft all night. Um, so I have videos reviewing these, but I'll just take you through real quick. Um, this one you got, I can sit up in when I'm in my pad. My stove would sit right here on this side. And I would be on this side of the tent with, once again, my stove jack here. And I'd probably put my wood to either side. Usually I'm gonna put my wood over here and I'm gonna rotate my stove so it kind of is diagonal so that I don't have to move around this pole to get into it. Then I can just feed it with my wood pile here while I'm sleeping. Um, when I got it all got out, you know, it's pretty good. I got about an extra foot on each side. Um, it doesn't look like a foot in this, but it is. So I got a decent amount of space. It's not like you're going to be super comfortable, but if you're just looking for a place to hang out in the evening um, and you're not looking to spend your whole day inside the tent, it works pretty good for me. Um, enough space to cook, enough space to sleep, and that's really what I want it for. Like I said, the, the major benefit for me is how light it is, um, how quick the setup is, it's all one piece, whereas the Mega Horn is, is you kind of have to put it together. It doesn't take as much footprint space and it's super easy to heat. I mean, you can get it warm in here really quick comparatively. It's just not nearly the square footage. And um, so those are some of the things I like about the Mini Peak. Um, you don't have to actually even bring a pole. You can hang it if you have a tree. You can hang it uh, through this loop here. It does have a loop on the top, which is a feature. I always bring a pole. In fact, I bring the adjustable pole that comes with the Mega Horn. Uh, this one doesn't come with its own pole. I just have a lightweight pole with it, which you could do. Um, I, I, and I put a few blocks to make it the right height, which, you know, if you need to take pieces of wood to put it up. But you could also, with that, uh, with the Mini Peak, another great feature is if you're going to be using, um, if you're going to be using a trekking pole, it's a great system to use with a trekking pole. If I had to guess, you probably need one that goes up to about 54 inches, which isn't exactly a standard trekking pole, but they make them that way. So you can use your trekking pole as a center pole in this, adjust it up to get it just right. 
Um, once again, this is the Mega Horn. It's the bigger of the two, much bigger. It does have these like little snow aprons at the bottom. So see how these, you can tuck them. Uh, they're not part of the tent or that well, they're like a flap. So I'm gonna stake these down. And then what I would do is I would just bury these with snow like this. And those would be completely buried all the way around to help the bottom of my tent insulate. So let's go around the outside here. Um, stove jack coming up. Ideally, it'd probably be a little bit taller, but um, I'll go through some things with my pipe here in a minute that I've learned. Uh, but you want your pipe to come really just above the top of your tent, in my opinion. If it's too low, um, some sparks can come out and kind of land on your tent, give you little holes in it. Um, and if it's too high, it makes it so that it gets broken in high winds, which is a problem that I had before because I had the winds literally come through in the middle of the night and bend it out. Um, so that is something you got to watch out for. But I'll go through with, with you guys with that here in just a minute. I'll show you how I've adapted my um, chimney pipe um, to accommodate for some of those issues. Um, it's got, this one has two doors. I mean, this one's got a door on each side as well. The, uh, the mini peak, but the mega horn also has two doors. Um, and I have the stove set up in here so you can kind of see it. Whoa. So it's going to take up the space in front of the pole. If you're sleeping with two people, um, typically you sleep on each side like this. One sleeps, and this isn't doing a really great job of capturing it. But I'm going to be here, and then another person would be sleeping right here on the other side of the pole, laying that way. If you do it that way, you have plenty of space. Um, very comfortable. You can also put, on this side of the pole, there's a whole space you could put two pads side by side. That's another good way to do it. If you want to keep all the space in front of you open. Um, but you can see how small this stove is in in this big space um it does heat it just fine but you've got to constantly be feeding it wood if you want to keep it decently warm um for me by myself this is the tent i like to bring if i know i'm going to be hanging out for like a good portion of the day inside if i'm not planning on basically being gone or out all day um if i'm planning on being here for a long time to cook you've seen i have videos with me doing that would much prefer this much bigger tent um, I mean, I can even stand up in this thing, um, you know, and really stretch my legs out. Um, I can spread out all of my gear. So this one is more of like if you plan on going out in the snow and you're going to hang out for quite a bit of time um, and you don't plan on going out hiking during the day and just coming in and sleeping at night. So I have my two different tents. They made a third one. I think it's called the Rocket XL. Um, and I actually really like that design. It's much closer to like an A-frame and then it's got a kick out for the stove in the back. So like you would have a pole here and then your stove would be here and it would kind of come down. And then you'd have all the space in front of it to sleep on either side and put your gear. So I think it's kind of like a, a splits the difference between the two tents. Uh, maybe not as much headspace as this one. Um, but it has its own features. Let me show you a few things I've done with this pipe just as a good tip. Um, so when I originally got this stove pipe with it, they come in 10 foot sections. So um, I assumed that I should use the entire 10 feet of it. That was a mistake. Um, I would highly recommend not using it because it sticks up so high, it ends up going about three, four feet above the top. But even if you, um, it's got these guy lines on it to keep it from moving around in the wind, as you can see on, uh, there's three of them. But even with those, if it gets crazy windy, what'll happen is it creates a weak point where it comes out of your tent right here. And it'll actually, this'll, it'll push up against your tent and it'll break. That's what happened to me. Or if you have it out of your tent and you trip over one of those guy lines, once again, it's going to break right here because it's right. This is right in the middle at its weakest point is where it comes out of here. So it'll get stuck against the edge. And as the wind pulls it, it'll just snap it. 
Um, I mean, the titanium is strong, but right in the middle there, that's just a lot of leverage to cause it to break. So I would cut it down. And then what I did to mine is I actually took the extra piece that I cut down and I doubled it up in the middle to give it strength where it comes out of that. So let's see, right here, you can see where it's kind of got another set of layers. So that's actually the piece I cut off. I double wrapped it and I put the rings on it and it actually makes the stove system a little bit tighter and it double insulates that stove at the exact point that it's coming out of the tent. So you, you have to worry a little bit less about it getting that material too hot. Um, and so that's what I did with mine. I cut it down. Um, I'd recommend you cut it down to about seven feet maybe. Take the other three foot section and then wrap it right in the middle of it so that the middle now is doubly has twice as much titanium on it and then that way if it does get that pressure in the wind it's not nearly as likely to snap you have taken the weak points and moved them up and down to where it's not pushing up against the tent so i'm going to give that a try this year i'm pretty happy with that adjustment to strengthen it and secure it a little bit and then also by shortening it, I don't think it'll blow all over the place in the wind. But I'm going to take one of these out this weekend. I'm really leaning on taking my mini peak out because I don't think I'm going to be spending a lot of time and I'm going out with a few guys. But I may take the mega horn. I haven't made up my mind. But anyways, that's just a quick review. Me setting up the tent. You guys can see them kind of side by side, how much space they take, some of the pros and cons. And just a little bit on the pipe if you... Um, if you get one, strongly recommend you cut it down so it's only sticking up above the peak of your tent by maybe a foot or two, and then just take whatever section you cut off, double insulate it in the middle, it, and it makes it, it strengthens it, and uh, also gives a little bit of insulation against that tent flap as well for the heat distribution. So I think all around it's a big win. It's not like it adds a bunch of weight. Anyways, hope this video is helpful. I'll see you guys next video. Hey guys, if you like the video you just saw, please subscribe, click the bell so you can get alerted for any new videos that I may do, and check the links below for any information I described in the video. I'll try to put as much there as possible. Thanks for watching.